So from studying symmetry graphically, we came up with the following observations. So for x-axis symmetry, if you take any point x, y, that point is going to move to x negative y, meaning x stays the same while y changes sign. If a graph has y-axis symmetry, if you start with a point x, y, that point is going to get sent to negative x, y, meaning x will change signs and y would stay the same. And for origin symmetry, if you take a point x, y on the graph, then the point negative x, negative y will also be on the graph, meaning both coordinates change sign. So these observations that we made are now going to help us develop an algebraic procedure for finding symmetry. So let's jump over to page seven, okay? The algebraic tests for symmetry or summarized in the box. But let me show you what's coming up in example five so you can understand what we're gonna be doing, okay? In example five, we are going to be given just an equation, not a graph, okay? Of course, you can graph out the function and actually these are the, the equations in example five are the equations from example two. So we have already looked at the graph, okay? But what's happening here is now we're gonna be looking at symmetry from an algebraic perspective. If you are just given the formula, how can you tell what type or types of symmetry the graph of the equation will have, okay? So let's go back up here to this box, okay? The algebraic tests for symmetry are exactly what we observed graphically. So say you take your equation and you want to test it for x-axis symmetry. You are going to replace y with negative y in the equation. Why are we doing that? Well, we know for x-axis symmetry, if you start with any point, that point is going to get sent to the point where y has changed sign, but x has stayed the same, okay? So that's why in your equation, you will replace y with negative y in the equation, and then you're going to simplify. If the original equation results, then the graph of the equation has x-axis symmetry, okay? If you don't get the original equation back, then the graph does not have x-axis symmetry, okay? That's how it works. So a similar thing for y-axis symmetry, okay? We know for y-axis symmetry, if you start with a point, x will change sign and y will stay put. So for y-axis symmetry, to do the test on our equation, we're gonna replace x with negative x, and then we're gonna simplify. If we get the original equation back, the graph is going to have y-axis symmetry. If we do not get the original equation back, then the graph does not have y-axis symmetry. Finally, if we are doing origin symmetry, we know we have to change the sign of both x and y. So in your equation, you are going to replace x with negative x, and you're also gonna change y to negative y, and then you're gonna simplify. If you get the original equation back, the graph is gonna have origin symmetry. And then if you don't get the original equation back, then the graph does not have origin symmetry. So these are the algebraic tests for symmetry, okay? Exact same thing we saw when we did it graphically, okay? So let's take a look at example five, okay? Again, it's gonna be the same three equations we saw from example two, okay? Um, and we're gonna test each equation for symmetry algebraically, okay? Keep in mind, when we did example two, we built the graph. So we do have the graph to go back to, to go back to so that we can confirm our results. 